Przodkaj, przodkaj. So, yesterday Intel released their 4311 drivers and it seems they're kind of messing with me. I mean, just some days ago, like two days ago, I released a video testing, or in this case retesting, 15 games on the Intel Arc A770 at 1080p, 1440p and 4K to see how drivers evolved in the past few months, if they're better or not. And just as I was editing that video, Intel released a new driver. And it seems that those same drivers increase the performance in some games by a lot. Gladly, there was only one of those 15 games that I actually had to retest. Cyberpunk 2077. This because with the new 1.62 patch, the one that brings Path Racing and Intel XESS 1.1, got a massive performance uplift on Intel GPUs, as I suppose Intel works closely with CD Projekt in order to make XESS and Intel Arc GPUs perform as they should, making the game not only run better in terms of FPS, but also way, way smoother. And then I saw in the release notes of the new Intel drivers, the 4311, that the Arc A750 had up to 63% performance increase in that space, up to 19% increase in F1 2022, alongside some minor performance tweaks in some other games. So I knew that I had to retest the Arc A770 once more and in more games. Basically a follow-up video to the video that I made some days ago. Know what you also should follow? Today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. And now that I know what to expect, Let's watch some benchmarks. The first game is Cyberpunk 2077, where I included the results of not only 4257 and 4311 drivers, but also the ones with 1.61 patch for a matter of perspective. As you see, the performance difference is insane. We're looking at 38 average FPS more at 1080p with exactly the same graphical settings. But the biggest difference is definitely on the 1% lows, where we went from 38.5 to 67.3 FPS, which translates into a 74% performance uplift, and that's just insane. It's in fact so insane that we have almost the same average FPS at 1440p with a new patch that we have at 1080p with the older one, with even higher 1% lows, so it's outstanding. Definitely an outstanding job by both Intel and CD Projekt here. In F1 2022, Intel claimed up to 19% performance increase with the RK750, but it seems to be even better with the Intel RK770, as at 1080p ultra settings and max ray tracing, we have an increase of 23% in the average FPS and 25% in the 1% lows, going from 61 to 75 average FPS, which is an astronomical performance increase for just a driver update. At 1440p and 4K, the performance increases were still pretty noticeable, making the Arc A770 experience in this game much more enjoyable. On Deathloop, Intel claimed up to 4% performance increase at 1080p and up to 6% at 1440p with the Arc A750. In my case, it was actually the opposite. At 1080p, we had 7.2% increase in the average FPS, alongside 11% increase in the 1% lows, while at 1440p and 4K, the difference was basically null. And since this game has no benchmark tool, we can't really have the precise performance increase, but at least at 1080p it was pretty noticeable in real gameplay. On Dying Light 2, Intel claimed up to 4% increase at 1080p and once again up to 6% at 1440p with the RK750. But that was with ray tracing, so I decided to test it without it in order to see if the games were on pure performance side, if the performance gains were just on the pure performance side, sorry, CPU overhead being fixed for example, or if the performance increase was on the ray tracing side only. And as can be seen, well, it seems that the performance increases were basically in terms of ray tracing, at least for Dying Light 2. 
Moving to Dead Space Remake, Intel claimed up to 63% performance increase, but that's because the game was a complete mess to begin with, at least with the Intel GPUs. As you can see the screen, in some parts, the game stuttered like hell and the FPS tanked to unbearable levels, while with these new 4311 drivers, the gameplay finally turned into an enjoyable experience. Well, at least to some degree. In terms of results at 1080p, we went from an average of 53.9 FPS to 74.3, which translates into a 38% performance increase being the 1% close increased from 2.8 FPS to 42.1 FPS, which is a 15 times FPS increase. And I tested this scenario several times with the 1% lows always coming to 3 FPS or below. At 1440p it also made the game more playable, producing a 20% performance uplift with a 93% increase in the 1% lows. And at 4K we have another crazy performance increase in the 1% lows, while still having an average FPS increase of 21%. And with all these ray tracing performance increases, it actually led me to think about some other ray tracing games that I have previously tested with the 3959 drivers. Did the performance increase as well? Or not really? And since I'm kind of a curious guy, that's why I love what I do, I really had to test some more ray tracing games. Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition is the first one, using ultra settings, max ray tracing options and VRS to 4 times. And although we had some outstanding increases in terms of performance before, this game saw absolutely no increase. But I do have to say that this game was already running very well before, where the RK770 was actually faster than the RTX 3060, even in a full ray tracing game. Spider-Man Remastered also had a small performance uplift when using ray tracing settings to high, and although the increase was just around 2 average FPS at 1080p and 1440p, which is something that you wouldn't really notice in real gameplay, the increased 1% lows at 1440p from 48 to 43 FPS are a really good thing. And in Cyberpunk 2077 using ray tracing settings set to high is where we finally see a bigger performance difference comparing the patch 1.61 to 1.62. At 1080p we have only a slight increase in pure ray tracing performance, but as soon as we enable FSR we go from 45 average FPS on the older version to 54 in the newer one, which translates to an 18% performance increase, being the same case at 1440p where the difference was basically none natively, but around 8% when using FSR. And for a matter of perspective, this patch made the performance so much better to the RK770 that it now performs better than the RTX 3060 at 1080p, where before it was considerably slower. It is still quite slower than the 6700XT for example, but much better than before. And even at 1440p the results are awesome, with the RK770 being 16% faster than the RTX 3060 and only around 11% slower than the RX 6700XT, which is actually pretty good for this Intel GPU. And well guys, that's basically it. As you saw in the previous video, once again passing right now on the screen, where I tested 15 games with the 3959 drivers versus the 4257 ones, now we actually have the 4257 versus the 4311 ones, and as you saw in this video, and as you saw in the previous one, if you didn't saw the previous one, saw it as well, see it as well, sorry, uh, because you'll see some interesting results. Um, but in this video, the performance increases are just crazy, that space, F1 2022, and some other scenarios like Cyberpunk 2077 with a new with a new 1.62 patch, performance increases are just insane, and Intel GPUs are getting better by the day. They are still far away from AMD and, and NVIDIA in terms of features, um, in terms of overall performance, and in terms of frame pacing stability. In some games, not all, some games do have very good frame pacing, but others have terrible frame pacing. Um, as you can see, for example, Cyberpunk runs much better now. You can see the frame pacing very, very sketchy because I was actually recording at the same time. And when recording and playing that same game, uh, at least on the Intel GPU, the frame pacing will get messed up. But overall, it plays much, much better than before. 
Intel GPUs are getting better, Intel GPUs just got a huge performance increase with these drivers and Intel is definitely on the right path. So the RK750 is slightly slower than this card uh, and it costs around 250 bucks. So it's a nice deal for people that want to test new things uh, and want to, to have better performance in the long run with uh, Intel GPUs. Are they actually worth buying right now? Maybe, I would say even yes. If you want to, if you want, for example, AV1 encoding and decoding, I would say yes, definitely. But maybe at the same price, you have better options, like for example, the AMD ones, because AMD GPUs like the 6600 XT, 6650 XT, 6700 XT, they're just much cheaper now. Uh, and Intel would need to decrease their prices even further if they actually wanted to take some market share from AMD, because uh, AMD GPUs just are very, very well priced right now, uh, while the 3060, 3070 prices are just utter crap. So you're better getting an Intel or an AMD GPU right now if at least you're going for the previous generations. That's it. Still, Intel is once again on the right path and their performance increases are just getting nuts. Yeah. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. Leave your likes so that, that that's it i forgot leave your like subscribe and basically that's it leave your comment in the comment section let me know what you think about the, the performance increases if you have an intel gpu or if you want to have one or if you actually would consider buying an intel gpu for some reason like encoding decoding uh workflow something like that because things are getting better by the day and intel is actually doing a pretty decent job in terms uh, of driver optimizations okay so Basically, that's it. They, they still have lots and lots of issues, but they're much better than they were, for example, four months ago. Much better. Thanks a lot one more time and see you in the next video.